It is said that in 1901, the year of our federation, Australia's population was 70% urban. We were then one of the most urban nations in the world. We still are. Yet, in 1901, although most of the people were living in towns and cities, the landscape and the outback still occupied a key position in Australia's national sentiment. The landscape and our relation to it loom behind our nation, our notions of identity, destiny and nationhood. I think it still does. The importance accorded to images of the landscape in those days is reflected in the fact that by 1901, the Wing Prize for the best landscape painting of Australian scenery was already in its fifth year. The Archibald Prize for Portraiture would not be inaugurated for another 20 years, until 1921. Landscape painting had very early become the great subject of Australian art. Interestingly, the Wing Prize did not seem to ignite the same controversies as the Archibald. Until now. Until uh, now, well, um, I was going to say, on the other hand, um, uh, excluding the issue of plagiarism and quotation, which occur in any genre, I can only remember one occasion when controversy really swirled around landscape painting in the wind. In January 1945, that's the year after the Nobel Archibald fiasco, the Wynn Prize was won by Sally Herman with a painting of King's Cross tenements. Cries went up. Is a cityscape a landscape? Were sordid buildings a suitable subject for high art? It was a storm in a teacup, and the community's concept of the term landscape simply broadened, like elastic, to include cityscapes and seascapes. I recently mounted an exhibition of Sydney Abstract Painting 1958 to 1964. The artists were abstract expressionists, including Leonard Hessing, Robert Hughes, Frank Hodgkinson, Eva Kubos, etc. I was struck by the fact that underlying their abstraction Almost all were dealing with the rhythms, the shapes, the textures, and the colours of the landscape in a way that most of the leading American abstract expressionists didn't. I don't think I'd ever been in such a brown room. It showed how embedded the landscape was in the sensibilities of these essentially abstract artists. The fascination and affection for the Australian landscape continues. The landscape remains a viable vehicle for exploring questions of where we live, how we relate to where we live, and the extent to which our real or imagined physical environment can provoke our fears and apprehensions. I'd like to congratulate the shortlisted exhibitors here and to commend their works to collectors amongst us, works purchased here as well as supporting the artists will support the continuing growth of this prize. I'd like to acknowledge the principal sponsors, Menzi Art Brands, International Art Services, the UNSW College of the Fine Arts, uh, with whom the prize winner can create a limited edition of print, uh, limited print edition, probably with Kofa's master printmaker, Michael Kempson, and the remarkably generous Marlene Antico. I think this prize now stands with the win as one of Sydney's two prime awards for landscape painting. Marlene used to conduct an art gallery in Paddington, and my cousin exhibited there in a mixed exhibition of plein air landscape painting. This cousin has just published an amusing memoir, and in what might appear to you, to some of you, to be an opportunistic plug for a relative's product, <laughs> uh, well, it, it is, of course, I shall close with a story he relates in his book. The memoir is called Tell Em Nothing, Take Em Nowhere, and the author's name is Max Cullen. <laughs> Max writes that he had a work in an exhibition at the S.H. Irvin Gallery. He noticed Margaret Olley, 
looking at the work very closely. Max sidled up. Continuing to examine the painting, Ollie said, you're looking more and more like Ian Fairweather. Now usually artists don't like their work being likened to the work of another artist. But Max admired Ian Fairweather's paintings, so he took Margaret Ollie's compliment, uh, comment as a compliment. Thank you, Margaret, he replied. Ollie looked at him sharply and said, not your painting, you. You're looking more, more like Ian Fairweather. <laughs> I have pleasure in declaring this exhibition of landscape paintings, none of which looks like Ian Fairweather, open. <laughs> Peter for your lively introduction. Uh, I'd like to now call on Rex Irwin, um, art dealer. Where is Rex? There he is here. Thank you, Rex. To accept the winning uh, um, artist's award, uh, the prize went to Paul Ryan. So, Rex... It's fine, thank you. Now, if I could ask Rod Menzies uh, to come. Rod is going to present the two honourable mentions, and he has... Thank you, Marlene. Uh, well, a uh, short, short list of artists. What a wonderful show it is tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, fabulous to have you here at Menzies Art Branch. We're delighted to uh, provide the premises for this uh, wonderful uh, function and you know behind every function in addition to the judges and the audience and the artists is a fantastic entrepreneur and I think we should put our hands together right now for Marlene. Now it's my pleasure to uh, present two uh, wonderful artists with um, the Honourable Mention, yes, and it should be ladies first. So firstly, uh, Susan Baird, right, Susan? Yeah. The gentle chick, Congratulations, wonderful, wonderful effort. Congratulations. And now, Mr. Seth Birchall yeah. for the park, right, Seth? Thank you, one and all. Thank you. thank you, Rod, and thank you uh, for your kind words. Uh, I, if I may uh, ask um, Professor Ian Howard to approach the microphone to give the prize from the University of New South Wales College of Fine Arts. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Marlene. As you can hear from my voice, we were on an overnight trip from northern China, so I'm struggling here a bit. But as you would know, uh, Michael Kempson, our great printmaker at COFA, uh, comes along and selects a work which he kind of thinks is applicable to Cicada Press, and then that person will work with us during the year to make an edition of fine prints through Cicada Press. And I can now make the announcement of the person who's got that um, opportunity. And the person is... Oh, no. no, I'm only joking. I haven't entirely lost my voice. It's Tom Carmen. Yeah. Tom. Now, um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Ian Howard. And thank you for your um, prize that is, I know, so coveted by uh, all the artists. Thank you very much. And, uh, and now, uh, we need to call the winner of the uh, Packers pick, and that is Seth Virtual. Congratulations. <laughs> Said some chewy. Yes, I'm sorry. You get that. And I think it would 